Hi guys, it's Archon now. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I very much do. Hoping of the so. It's that time. You'll start to see YouTube reviewers popping up all over the place with their autumn videos. And I'm going to do mine. I only do two a year. I kind of do one in spring and one in autumn. Because for me, spring summer fragrances are interchangeable. And so are autumn winter. So I don't really think it's worth doing four. So... These 10 fragrances are things that I'm going to be looking forward to wearing this autumn. They are all things I've added to my collection this year and a lot of them I haven't really gotten to enjoy yet because the weather's not been quite right even though I don't usually follow rules but for the most part I do I guess. I like to have a rotation, I like to be able to grab things. I've literally just switched my shelf from spring summer to autumn winter so if you want to see what it looks like here it is. I'll keep talking while the image comes up. Uh, like I said, I only rotate twice a year. I only started rotating this year, actually, and I will forever now because I have enough in my collection. So this is the stuff that is on my shelf for autumn winter. I did actually forget my favourite fragrance, one of my favourites, which is Namban. It should have been on the shelf, but um, it's not. But without further ado, here is my list of things that I'll be wearing. So yay, let's get started. So the first one on the list is called Tango, and it's by Mask Milano. This was actually a gift from Mask Milano to me. I did a spotlight video on their company, which I'll post a link in the description box to. They sent me a sample set and Tango had smashed. That was the one sample that didn't quite make it. It had smashed inside the entire box and the box smelled lovely and it turned out that it was my favorite of all the ones I smelled. So they very kindly gifted me a bottle of their fragrance. I love this bottle, it's so cool. This is a spiced amber. I'm going to spray it on my hand actually. Their sprayers are beautiful as well. It's like you press it and it just keeps coming out. But it's a really, really beautiful uh, spiced amber. There's cumin in here, cinnamon, it's rose, tonka, and it also has a, a really unusual note of melly lotus. It's also known as uh, sweet clover. You don't really find that in many fragrances at all, but this is warming, it's cozy, it really lasts. They, their bottles come in 35 mils maybe 30, 35 mils and they're extra as well so that's why they're quite little but i love their bottles they're pretty cool so look at that liquid just bright red gorgeous autumnal oh goodbye the light's gone off we're gonna carry on the next one on the list is thousand kisses deep by lush you do not know how long i've wanted this fragrance for i used to work for lush many years ago more than 10 years ago and when i worked for lush they still had their sister company which was be never too busy to be beautiful long ass name i know but this was part of their collection and they've moved it over to lush and when i recently went to lush and visited the biggest lush shop in the world also link that video below i managed to buy this this is a, an unusual one i just wanted it for so long it's got something magical it's essentially an oriental. Orientals are great for autumn, winter. But this is different because it's, it's a citrusy oriental and I don't, you don't really find that very often. Maybe the orientals have citruses in but not as prominently and not citruses that go through the whole wear length. So this is myrrh, it's labdanum, it's a fruity oriental. There's a lot of citrus. I think it's mandarin or maybe tangerine. I could be getting that wrong. It's also got osmanthus, which gives it an apricot, fruity, and also a little bit leathery type feeling. And it feels exotic, but cozy and citrusy. It's a tough one to describe, but I got my little dinky bottle. I'm glad I finally got it. I'm gonna spray it in the air because I love this one. Mm, it reminds me of 10 years ago. It's just very special. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite fragrance that Lush makes. So, Thousand Kisses Deep. The next one everyone should know. It's a big, famous fragrance. It is Alien by Terry Mugler. This is on my list because my bottle is nearly finished and I usually wear this in autumn, winter. And when I found out that Mugler had sold out to L'Oreal, I rushed out and bought myself a big bottle before it gets reformulated into crap, if it hasn't already. I don't think it has yet, I could be wrong, but I just went and got it before it gets changed. So Alien, if you don't know, only has three notes, Sandback Jasmine, 
white amber and cashmere woods real famous fragrance sweet narcotic kind of jasmine fragrance that you kind of smell everywhere but to me it's a staple in my collection and i will always love alien so it's going to be worn in autumn winter for me the next one on the list was actually is actually no was actually my favorite discovery of last year i did a video where i went sniffing around london with my colleague olga and this fragrance was the one that stuck out of the i don't know hundred 200 fragrances we smelled that day. I got a perfume headache. It was awful and I managed to get myself a bottle in a swap with a lovely lady called Carol If you're watching this, thank you. It's Ruth Marstenbrook and it's called Signature. Oh my gosh, do I love this perfume? This is so cool. So this is this is I don't know. It's essentially fruity. It's pineapple and blackcurrant But it's also very woody as well. It's almost like a syrupy woody sandalwood with pineapple and blackberry in there. It's got that perfumey elegance that I really, really like, and man, does this thing last all day. I wore this to my friend's wedding in summer, given, yeah, I'm doing an autumn winter video, but I feel like this fits every occasion, but I'll be breaching for it more in cold weather because it lasts, it can withstand cold, it can withstand heat. I put this on in the morning of my friend's wedding and it still was going when I was still going at four in the morning. I actually want a bigger bottle of this, I'm not even going to lie. I love the image on the front, it's a little girl on a swing with a window and it's just a bit whimsical but it's it's just great. It, oh gosh, this could be just going up in the ranks of my favourite, like top 20 ever I think. I just really like it and I actually reached out to Ruth Marstenbrook and they're sending me samples of their other fragrances which I'm really excited to try so I will do a spotlight on them as well. Keep your eyes peeled, I'll do it eventually. <laughs> But yeah, definitely check this out if you can. The next one on the list is by Strangers Perfumery. I recently did a spotlight on them as well. Uh, it's called Scotch Peat. This fragrance actually reminds me of something that you might get from Lush. The notes are malted barley, old oak barrels, hay, peat, moss, cade, cypress, oris, clear wood, dried fruits, tonka, smoke, and cedar wood. So this is a really nice, almost, it's not super smoky, but it's like a kind of herbal earth kind of smell. That's the only way I can describe it. It definitely feels autumn. It feels like when it's the time of bonfires and there's a nice sweetness in here as well. And it feels a little bit boozy as well. And Prin, the perfumer made this because he traveled to Scotland and wanted to create that feeling of, I don't know, the highlands and just whiskey and oak and all of those warming, woody, earthy kind of smells, and I love it. I spray a lot of this on. It actually feels a little bit kind of, not medicinal, what would the note be in here that does that? It's probably Cade. Cade gives things like a medicinal herbal smoky edge, and that's got all of this going on. The liquid is really dark as well. It's like spraying some kind of dark, earthy nectar onto your skin, so I love this one. Scotch peat, wearing it in autumn. The next fragrance on the list is the other thing that I got in a swap from Carol, and it's Chypre Charnel by Molinard. This is the fragrance that is kind of pushing me towards Chypres. I am not the biggest Chypre lover, especially classic ones, but this one to me sits somewhere in the middle of modern and classic. This feels super elegant. It smells really expensive, but it's not the most expensive fragrance in the world. It's an oak moss, obviously. It's a patchouli. I wrote notes here. What did I write? There's a rose in here, though. It's kind of peppery smelling. It feels like it could be a Chanel fragrance to me. It's got that kind of elegance to it. like More like a classic Chanel, but with a few modern twists. And the dry down, yes, very oak mossy, which is typical of a Chypre fragrance, but this one's just... It's just got something really good about it. There's a lot of patchouli in here as well. It's a tough one to describe, but you just have to kind of wear it, and I love this bottle. I think it's so cool with its, it kind of goes from clear to not clear. What's that called? Ombre? Ombre effect? But anyway, Chypre Chanel by Molinard. Great company from the south of France. They've got a lot of kind of classic sort of compositions. They've got very simple fragrances, but then they've got some really great ones as well. They've got a few lines that stand out, and this one is lovely. And I want to smell the other ones in the line that look like this, so... A really nice modern slash classic Chypre, which might be my gateway into classic Chypres, I don't know. 
The next one on the list is Caravelle Epicee by Frappan. This is actually the only fragrance from Frappan that I like. I don't like any of their other fragrances. I just don't get a lot of them. But this one is the standout for me. I got this one very recently. I've hardly even used it, but I've worn it a lot of times previously. It's another spiced amber. It's beautiful. It has tobacco as well. This one's powdery. It's a powdery amber with lots of spice. It's Spice Ship, that's the name, or Ship of Spices. Spice Ship, it is. Um, it's, a, it's, yeah, a spicy oriental. Really, really good. Let me just quickly look up the spices because I've forgotten, but the spices in here are enveloped in a beautiful, smooth tobacco and amber combination, and it's a real cosy kind of wear a scarf one, and I love the spray as well. This is one you can really lavish yourself with. It's gonna stink in here after this video. Ah, the spices, pepper, caraway, and pepper again. Yeah, and guyac wood as well, which is a kind of smoky wood. It smells a bit like nutmeg, a very soft cinnamon, and just like a, a lovely amber. It took me forever to realize that it was actually an amber. I wore it so many times and didn't realize because I focused on the spice. But yeah, if you like spiced ambers, tango is in a similar feeling to this definitely try out Cajavel Epic by Frappan. This next one is really special to me. I was so happy to get this as a gift from Prin of Strange, Strangers Perfumery. He has a separate line called Prasana. They're very complex, full of rich, special ingredients, and this one is Manishtana. This one is super spicy. It's an incense fragrance. I guess you could call it an oriental, but it doesn't lean very... There is amber in there, I believe, but it's not too ambery. This one's all about smoke, leather, and a ton of spices. There's also um, some florals that I can't quite pinpoint right now, but uh, because I've, I've worn this a few times, but I focus on the spice. That's what I smell. Mainly it's nutmeg that I get from this, but it has pepper, cumin, nutmeg, clove, allspice, and caraway. There's labdanum in here, there's patchouli. He says smoke uh, and castorium, which gives it leather. To me, it smells like temple incense. A spray in the air. It's very rich, it's really exotic. I can see the perfume particles flying around in the air. Mystical. Just a really lovely fragrance. It's so multi-layered. There's a lot going on, and it's nice to have an incense that doesn't feel churchy. It feels different. It feels a bit more Southeast Asian kind of incense, temple as opposed to like a Catholic incense. And I'm all about it. It's an extra de parfum as well, so it's really strong and it comes in 50 mils. Check it out if you can. The second to last one is by a super, super independent perfumer from England. His name is Aaron Terence Hughes. And the fragrance I've chosen for autumn from him is Tobacco, Oud and Vanilla. It's a very simple name. This one is really, really cool. It's the fluffiest oud fragrance I've smelled. So the tobacco in here is really smooth. The vanilla is like a fluff powder bomb. It's not like a cupcakey type vanilla. It feels like you're wearing fluff, soft, kind of out of focus fragrance. It's not an oud where it's sharp and kind of pierces the air. You can feel the oud in here, and the oud does cut through the vanilla and the tobacco and these powdery tones, but overall it's like a woody fluff bomb, and it's really hard to describe, but it's super diffusive, really long-lasting, it almost feels a little bit caramel-like. The tobacco and vanilla together makes it feel like caramel, but not sickly sweet, that's why I like it. I wouldn't wear something that was too sickly sweet like that. It's really balanced and it's a monster as well. It's just, it lasts forever. So quite, quite an unknown perfumer, I think, at the moment. He might get bigger, I don't know, but Tobacco, Oud and Vanilla by Aaron Terence Hughes is gonna be a, such a cozy, amazing, strong one to wear in autumn. And I think I've saved the best till last. Oh gosh, let me just prepare myself for this one. This one I am so happy to have in my collection. It is exquisite. I don't say that very often about fragrances, but this one just smells like luxury, money. It doesn't suit me. I'm not that type of person, but the way it smells to me is incredible. It is Saffron Rose, and it's by Grossmith, 
one of the oldest English perfume houses that exist. They've been around since the 1800s. This is one of their newer fragrances though, and this is, to me, just excellence in a bottle. This is saffron, of course. It's rose, of course, as well. It's actually an oud fragrance, but it's not a typical oud fragrance. The oud is placed in this so perfectly that you, you can feel something, but it doesn't feel like that huge Middle Eastern type oud that you smell everywhere. This has got a leather undertone, it has castorium in there, and it's it's just really special. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, I'm not going to lie, it, it is quite an expensive fragrance, but I will be doing a review on this and I'll probably gush a lot, I have to not gush, but it feels... Um, the rose in here isn't the main star of the show either, which is weird, even though it's called Saffron Rose. Everything in here is blended so well. It's kind of sharp, and the saffron doesn't go inky or weird in here. It's perfectly placed. It gives the fragrance just a touch of dry edge. The oud gives it its richness, and then the leather is like the backbone, and it really just needs to be smelled. It's not one that's very easy to describe, so I'm going to get more in depth with it. I've worn it so many times but I'm going to get more in depth with it so I can give you guys a full review because I just adore it. I wish it wasn't so expensive <laughs> but oh my gosh try this out if you can. Get a sample from somewhere just try it because it's the bomb. Yeah I said the bomb. 39 year olds shouldn't be saying the bomb but I did. I hope you guys like this video. I will be doing a lot more soon. I had a little bit of a break there I do apologize but Life gets busy. It really, really does. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you're going to be wearing in autumn. Do you have any of these? Do you like them? I can't wait. I'm going to put them back on my shelf now because I get anxiety when they're not on my shelf. So, you know, a little bit uh, OCD here. But anyway, have a great autumn winter. I'll see you really soon for another video. I'm out to Romano, trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. Goodbye.